10 a.m. in Los Angeles and we are talking to Tim Blum. Am I live? Yes, okay, I'm live. I'm live and it is 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. 03 in Los Angeles and we're talking to Tim Blum. Tim Blum is a better half or the other way around of Blum and Poe. Um, I would say that Blum and Poe, they kind of like built the LA art scene. They were early on, um, maybe actually they're responsible for all these like mega spaces we're dealing with now and, and um, the need of having like, uh, like big enterprises like this one. Uh, because I remember when I was in LA in 2003, I think, and saw their space. I, I thought, like, I couldn't imagine that a contemporary, like, a private commercial gallery could, could look like this. They launched the careers of Yoshitomo Nara and Takeshi Murakami, uh, amongst others. And uh, Tim, I think, is a good seismograph to understanding what's happening and what we are looking at. So let's see if we find him. And um, I don't see him here yet. And so here we go. At least I see it. So I just texted him. I mean, it would be too boring if it would work. Okay, so I just figured. I just figured that um, Tim uh, needs to get online now. I just texted with him. Um, so maybe I need to switch on the comments. Okay, so again, it is, now it's about 10.05 in Los Angeles, and we, the idea is to talk through different um, participant members of the art world, and uh, with Timothy Blum, okay, here we go. Um, Tim Blum is, the better half of Blum and Poe, and Blum and Poe is um, a, a, a force in in the LA art scene. I would say you can you, actually you can say that they are like the, they built the LA art scene. They were the first. Um, I mean, the galleries like started in the early '90s, and they launched careers of Nara and Murakami, uh, Grotian. Uh, so let me see, Timothy Blum. Here, I got him. Okay. So. You can't show. An old dog, new tricks, right? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, now, now we. <clears throat> Waiting for Timothy Blum. <sighs> I really need a haircut. There's no barbers. Okay, Tim, now you have to accept, you know, I sent you a request, now you have to, you have to push accept.
Come on, Tim. Exactly. <laughs> so it says waiting for Timothy Blum. Yeah, that's Kuni Gary. It is, it is uh, the, our viewing room, which you actually all can see uh, li online now. You can just, oh, let me see. It, he, it kicked off, so let's do it again. Let's try again. This is, so we built in this, this uh, table. It used to be one giant hall. Hey, you made it, man. Yeah, yeah, my daughter helped me. <laughs> That's what I just said. Is that you can't? What's this? What's this saying? You can't show. Yeah, I heard you. I heard dogs. you say that. You you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so I understand. how are you doing? Uh, okay. Yeah, not yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here. How are you? I I can tell you're doing great. Oh, uh, it comes in waves. You know, it's good and bad. It's like. I mean, we are very, we are very uh, privileged and fortunate that we have the, that, I mean, that I live in the gallery and it has pros and cons. And it yeah. seems what I read in the news that we are really pretty well off in Germany. Uh, this, is what, this is what we hear as well from our view. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, but it's tough. I mean, they, they don't really say when it's going to continue, at least with a new regulations in when the life comes back to normal. And then it's also, you know, they discuss a lot if, if closing schools has any purpose after all, which, you know, the different virologists. Um, and um, yeah, so um, I just said in my intro, I think I said it like three times because the first time apparently there was no, there was no sound. Um, yeah. How, how you guys really changed LA and 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 put it somewhat of on a on a map internationally also with you bringing your insights from japan and sure. and i wanted to i mean you've been you opened the gallery in the early 90s i opened in to early 2000 and th that was just right in the midst or just after a crisis so you witnessed how many crises now three <laughs> in the duration of the gallery i mean the first six years was a kind of daily crisis yeah that's, <laughs> so that's, yeah i mean from 94 to let's say 2000 uh when you just opened a gallery and and you were in la it was a grind but you had a goal and a focus so you kind of just stormed through because there was nothing to lose right yeah it's always it's always a different kind of crisis to experience when you don't have anything to lose exactly that's what i uh, often say it's like when you begin it's a crisis anyway. You yeah, know. for sure. So, I mean, you know, we started with no money, a tiny space and a, and a vision and you just grind it out. But I mean, I guess the first, yeah, I mean, the first big, cri big fundamental crisis was the global financial meltdown in 08, um, which we muscled through as well. At that point, we had literally just bought the building that we're now in, which was, we always would, roll everything in, everything in, everything in, always. Anytime we'd made a little money, we rolled it back into the business. That was a big roll. And right after we, we closed it, you know, then the financial market collapsed and we got caught in uh, this credit default swap stuff and all kinds of, of weird financial instruments that it kind of we got trapped in. But anyway, we, we kept blasting ahead got the building lifted off and and that actually sort of lifted fairly quickly in retrospect um and then of course now we all know the story so since then 10 years it's been constant frenetic uh not always in the best way growth growth expansion growth you know more 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 yeah um, so i mean i am not alone in thinking that that I'm, I'm sure much like you and many of our colleagues and friends and artists that, that the whole thing was bound to, bound to fail. The art world, but also just the global late capital, you know, the, well, here we are, late capitalism at its end stage. Yeah, or, or, or how you call it, um, the globalization, no? 
it's like the the, the results of globalization. It, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a it's a it's a course of blessing and a curse. We're very blessed in the blessed camp because here we are. You know, I'm I'm well secure in our in our house here, and my whole family's here, and and I can work from home, and we can make we can make uh, changes to get through this again. Um, but most people cannot, you know, so it, it's a, it's a very complicated place to be in. Uh, we're, we're trying to s save ourselves, our galleries, our staffing, our, all that we've built, but you know, we can do this. Um, but s sitting up here in the Hollywood Hills and thinking about all the, uh, the effects this is having all over the, it's, it's mind bending. You know, I'm reading, I'm reading a, a, the memoir right now of Hilma F. Clint. And, yeah. and her father, he was uh, at the Marines in, in, in uh, Sweden, you know, and, and he was working, he was never on a boat, but he was working in the harbor. And because he was working in the harbor, he had a lot to do with sailors coming in and out, uh, tr trade people. And so they had got, they fetched a lot of viruses and diseases because they brought them in and, and, and usually probably you would read over this part, you know, in different times. But now you think like, that's so interesting that, that because three of her siblings died, you know, of, of him yeah. as um, the oldest or two, the oldest and the youngest or something. Mm -hmm. And, and, and pro they were usually a lot, they were very sick of, often in the family because of this gatekeeping situation to viruses coming in. And, and that, uh, uh, if you think so, it's like crazy that how, how now you, this, we became like one giant society, you know, because we all hit by this. You, we're gonna talk to someone from India. Uh, it's, it's the whole globe is affected by this. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, that's, 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 that's the essence of it. it. It's showing who's actually in power. And your so if nobody, none of us are, no, no, no human has is, is, is got any, any amount of power they think they have, it's, it's nothing in the in the scheme of things and your galleries in new york la and tokyo are all closed right everything's buttoned up uh everybody's working from home um you know yeah it's it's we're we're we've seen it just like you and everybody else from their own perspective i mean the fact that we were we uh, we have a lot of work in uh, korea we work with a lot of korean artists so we we had experiences seeing that on the early curve of this Japan was in denial because I think they were trying to pretend they could somehow muscle through the Olympics. Yes. They've only recently buttoned things up, even though our gallery was shut alongside many other businesses, which took it into their own hands. Um, yeah. And of course, New York is, uh, is a center of, of all this. So yeah, yeah, that was crazy. You know, my, my, my Tokyo director, he told me that at the day they, they can't, they moved the Olympics. That day they announced, I don't know, right. 2,000 right. more cases, you know? That's right. As, as, as if the cases haven't been there already. That's right. But, but, That's but right. It, you know, once the relief was there to say, okay, we're going to move the, the Olympics. Of course. We, we, can, we can be honest about our, our toll, right? Yeah, I mean, Japanese politics and media are no different from any other place. I mean, they're very good at, at obfuscating and avoiding and lying and spreading misinformation, so... <laughs> And what's, what's, what, what do you, did you read, Mark Glimsch's letter? Did I did read that letter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's this, there's this like small nuance of, of engineered, engineered um, uh, ultra results and uh, high costs and so on, which I find very refreshing and I found it um, motivating. What I, what, I, what I kind of find strange in the media it's like the critique on, I mean, there, it's almost like this competition seems to go on that David Zwirner was like quoted that they don't have layoffs and that, that Glimsha has layoffs, which I find, I mean, you know, I don't hire, for me as a, I mean, we don't employ that many people. We employ like 40 people, but I don't employ people to lay them off. You know, we employ them because we need them in our team and we want to work with them. And if, mm. if, if, a, if, a, if a entrepreneur or company owner or whatever comes into the situation to, to short our uh, things or lay off people, it's not, it's, it's painful, you know, it's not yeah, that course. sometimes you need to make these decisions. And I find it a weird, um, 
a, a commentary by the media. But what I wonder is, do you, what do you predict in the changes of the art world? Do you think we're going to have less fairs? Or... <laughs> I would say so, yes. I mean, the changes are going to be systemic, deep, vast, broad. It'll affect every single aspect to, again, the world and certainly our world, a hundred percent. Again, you know, you, we haven't had a chance to chat in, at great length uh, too many occasions, although we, we did have that wonderful day in L.A. running around with Friedrich not too long ago, which is uh, when I think we made a nice connection. Very much. And um, I think we see the world in, this, in a very similar way. I mean, uh, this has already uh, been teetering on the edge of collapse. Everybody that you and I both know on any, on, in any part of the art world has been complaining and bemoaning the, the peripatetic you know, way the art world and the world has become. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the dealers and a lot of the people that are in it don't ever speak the truth. And speak the truth about what fair, what fair works, why, when, how. Everybody's like, oh yeah, it was amazing. We killed it. We crushed it. Jesus, we made, you know. But you're like, dude, I know the game. I know the game. I mean, I don't care what stripe or level you're selling at. This whole thing is, a, it's a house of cards. Uh, I think that most of the fairs are going to f disappear. I know for a fact that even uh, uh, for, for the big fairs, which I do hope. Uh, that two of them, I suppose, or three survive, that a lot of the dealers that normally uh, exhibit in these fairs are not going to be around to exhibit. And that's just a straight, my, my honest take on it. And that, I don't know what level, it could be from any level of gallery. I know because I'm on a Bos the Basel committee, we have a global kind of Zoom call, and I know that I talk to a lot of other dealers. We're up, Jeffrey Deitch and I are starting a, a platform here in L.A., um, of about 60 dealers to try to create some sort of, you know, again, marketing and promotion. And it's, it's, it's a really grisly scene uh, just to get by, just to survive. So I think that even if this thing gets, we open up in the summer, which I highly doubt we will, people are going to be taking six months, a year, two years, three years to catch up, even if they can. And it's, it, I mean, from my view, good riddance, um, to most of them. We'd already huh? cut back dramatically. I mean, I, I, you know, some of the colleagues that do 20, three, 20 or 25 fairs, maybe you're one of them, I don't know. But I, <laughs> I don't know. We don't I even just... count, you know, we do so many. We do, we do, we do, we, we do way too many. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just, you know, it, it wasn't working from my view and it certainly isn't going to work going forward. I think that I've certainly realized that you know, my, I've, I've suffered and my life has suffered through the, the kind of motion, which has been a delusional motion. I think that I'm having more, this is fantastic to chat with you right now. I'm having more conversations and I'm getting much more thinking and actually a lot more accomplished right now here without even leaving for the last month. That's um, true. Yeah. I find these Zoom meetings also super effective. Very effective. But you, know, but you know, I, my concern is with these art fairs. Yeah, it's it's a bit like this. It's like this 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 allegory of a of a of a, a committed crime. You know, with three um, uh, gangsters in it. I think if 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 one of them uh, snitches, gets walks walks free, and the others go to prison. You know, and it's like all of us saying, ah, oh, yeah, you know, it's better not to do these art fairs. And <laughs> of course. Oh, of course, you, that's totally it. Yeah. Nobody wants to say no. Yeah, exactly. But then we all gonna do it, and and I think um, and and um, and only if if we because what's also so crazy, for example, the reason why we stopped doing Miami is because I did not want to spend that type of money on hotel nights. Yeah, you know, for me and the team, and I thought it's because it got like it got like. Uh, and then you only can book, I don't know, you have to book the whole 10 days, uh, seven days, even you, you only stay three nights and, and yeah, all, of course. What but all that, all, of course, this is, this is all deeply and highly suspect and actually, frankly, kind of disgusting. And so, then also a lot of people think that I'm, 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 I'm uh, that it's like a, a kind of a marketing stunt, which of course it, 
you use it as well for that, but we, we thought it's kind of crazy to ship, you know, to f air fly everything to Hong Kong and then sell it back to my German clients. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like it's, it, it well, is an ecological disaster, you know? Well, but of course, this is the, the hard truth you're, you're speaking, okay? That, that that actually is a fundamental fact of, of how this business works. We're gathering together material by artists that people wish to purchase and shipping it halfway across the world and then often selling it right back where it came from or we shipping it. well it's often right? pre often pre often pre-sold but shipped anyway for the purposes yeah. of marketing and promotion that's not to say there aren't benefits to it but generally speaking the whole thing expand you know it's, it's like a balloon that just went just popped but anyway, I don't know. You were in the beginning of the conversation. You were talking about the, you know, the Japan, the uh, Japan, and and the relationship to that. And I've been, of course, thinking a lot about that. Um, and going forward, for the for the uh, just in a short short term, anyway, I'm not leaving California. Number one, I mean, I'm not going anywhere really. Nobody can. But I'm going to definitely put a bigger focus on California, which I've been saying for years and years, and on the Pacific Rim. You know, this is why I have a relationship with Japan. I was raised most of my life in Southern California, which ultimately led me to Japan as opposed to Europe, had I been born on the East Coast or somewhere else, yeah, mm -hmm. or raised there. So uh, for me, this is exciting, you know, to, to sort of almost even theoretically restrict myself for a bit, um, even in the head space to like, just try to think what we can get accomplished within the the world that we're in and not think I'm not ignoring the whole world because it's there and we have spent 25 years building relationships, but more about getting a little bit more entrenched in where we are. Um, and that's more of a local, you know, issues of local economies and things like this. But anyway, yeah. But that's interesting because that's a trend in so many other fields. Huh? And I, I, that's, I thought that would, reach the upward also it, 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 it sounds kind of silly you know like eat local and all the things but I think that there is a reason to you know it makes sense to go to a you have you, you you maintain a gallery in Tokyo you know that's a different thing than just going to Asia for for one week to 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 uh, part be take part of an art fair or something you know it's way well, more a hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's yeah. also, look, I mean, since you have a gallery in Tokyo too, we can speak of that a little bit. I mean, you know, we opened there in 2014. Uh, we decidedly did not open in Hong Kong. Uh, people yeah. thought, well, that's fucking weird. Why would you open in Tokyo? I mean, it's like Hong Kong's the place, man. And like, well, first of all, since I've spent 35 years in Asia <laughs> and in Tokyo, I, I kind of have a good inclination of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, Tokyo is the cultural capital of Asia. This is it. I mean, it's, there's no argument there. It's all, and I'm not degrading or d d diminishing yeah. other yeah. cultures and their architecture and cinema and, and so on and so forth. I mean, look at South Korea, look at Chinese film, etc. But Tokyo is the cultural capital. And we also happen to work with, my God, I mean, it must be 10 or 12 or 14 or 15 Japanese artists, yeah? Uh, and working with a lot of the movements of the post-war period. So it made a lot of sense. And actually, I was in the beginning, look, I know Japan so well, there's not a massive client base there. Um, but slowly over these uh, what, you know, six, seven years, I have seen it progress to a place that I've never seen in my lifetime there, as mm -hmm. well right. as the fact that all the Asian clientele are moving they travel through there. Tokyo all the time. Often I once thought a month. One, one big reason is also that artists really love so much to go to Tokyo. Well, of course. I mean, it's it's one of the greatest places on 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 earth for sure. But so, but when, but when you left Tokyo to open the gallery in LA, there was this giant economic meltdown in Japan, no? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I kind of scooted out just when it was hitting bottom, or not even hitting bottom. I mean, it was like, but heading that way. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you say a little bit more about this uh, platform you're planning with Jeffrey Dutch? Yeah, Jeffrey came up with this idea um, last week real quick, uh, got in touch with me. Uh, you know, it's again, it's a it's a online. I see some of these comments and questions coming through, by the way, people asking if online viewing rooms can work and so on and so forth. 
But it's uh, for me. yeah, but but oh, but I'm gonna a... take some questions in a bit. You can put in like if you use a real Instagram question function, I I gotta choose some questions in a minute. Yeah, sure. But uh, frankly, this crisis, as it were, is implementing changes that would have or should have been happening, may have taken five more years, 10, who knows. It's being compressed in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. There's never been an association in LA of galleries. It's a very fragmented uh, place, as you know, it's very you know horizontal and spread out. So uh, this is basically gathering together as many people who want to be involved. I think we have 45 or 50 positive replies to this. And it's uh, a consortium of galleries. We're building and constructing our own portal And we'll have uh, editorial, uh, we'll invite curators to do things, we'll, um, you know, any kind of thing, like an online journal, but also as, as, has, a, has a portal for sales. And fundamentally, you know, the biggest goal of this, frankly, is to reach a handout to a lot of these galleries that don't have any access point right now. Um, so this is a little bit like uh, Zwerner <laughs> altruistically not was using his, <laughs> his platform in such a generous way for these young dealers so they can of course gather all the data points and the emails yeah, and the charts. No, 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 no. this guy's hot let's poach him in six months don't want to be i'm sorry david you're amazing <laughs> phenomenal you know but you know i think that right now my whole thing for the last year and a half two years constantly has been collaboration community cooperation yes. this is the only way it works and all these you know we're as competitive as the next guy but it always works better when everybody collaborates communicates and cooperates and that's for a community here in la you and me on an artist or two or three mm -hmm. be in alignment uh everything works better and and so the narcissism and the megalomania and the 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 just blind ambition from these hyper funded monoliths it's it's uh, it's absurd and it's not going to work it hasn't worked and it's over yeah you know what i find kind of interesting in this case also because from some uh, economic magazine asked me here for my uh, out outlook on the on the art market and i thought it could it, it, it's very likely also that leveraged you know big leverage dealers sure. where where they co-acquired stuff, you know, with, with partners together. Yeah. Uh, that these partners or uh, whoever starts to need their funds back, you know, and, 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 that, and that's way more problematic if it's like inflated uh, acquisi acquisitions than just naturally grown uh, um, um, market participation, you know. We, so, we, we don't have the, 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 the intelligence on what's going on, on behind those doors, but I mean, I do a little, and it, it's, I'm sure it's, uh, it's a very nasty, ugly scene. Um, but look, I don't wish anybody to fail. I want everybody to succeed, um, and they will in the end. It just may look different. What do you think about online art fairs as the last art basel? Yeah, well, I mean, look, I'm, I mean, it's, it's not my, my uh, fundamental top choice for how to experience um, art, but it's, it's, it's the next best thing. I mean, I'd perfectly pr uh, prefer to go have breakfast right now with you here um, than do this, but, but yeah. this isn't bad, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. So I think it's a, it's a nice stand-in. I wouldn't want that to be a permanent placeholder but i think it is an augmented no pun intended but the augmented reality component it, it it augments the marketplace and that's okay we have to kind of allow for these different streams so and digitalizing the art experience which has been primarily physical uh, physical i think that's more than a comment than a question yeah that sounds like a comment yeah but i would agree with that Can you speak to the impact on artists? I mean, that um, from our side, it's, I mean, in Berlin, you know, we have this amazing fund for, for uh, uh, artists. They, can, they get 5,000 uh, euros immediately as a support. 
Uh, I just read in the news, unfortunately, there's a lot of mis, um, as always, um, misuse of this. So the whole program is a bit in danger now. Um, mm. But it's a great initiative um, to help uh, all those who, who've been, um, you know, cut off. I mean, it's not only contemporary uh, visual artists, it's all type of artists. And, um, but I think none of this exists in the U.S., no? How is it for artists? Well, yeah. look, I mean, you can't, you, you know, you can't compare anything to the U.S. The U.S. is each man for his own. You're on your own from A to Z. Yeah. How, how you get pregnant, how you are birthed, how you are educated, how you are fed, how you earn money. A to Z, you're on your own. That's the libertarian way, I suppose. Um, you know, but it's all being opened up and revealed now that, that I mean, there's no hiding. Um, so right now in this crisis, you know, it's each man for his own. It's like, yes, they have a stimulus package, but you have to have a head for applying for these uh, uh, stimulus monies as an individual or as a company, depending on your scale. So if you're a small gallery that's been open for five years and you have three employees and you can't afford to have your, uh, a high, your, you know, your high end banker or accountant or lawyer, it, it, of course, right? It's always structured this way. Mm -hmm. So Very artists cool. are no yeah. different. Now, we have provided our artists with, you know, the information to uh, to handle this, but most of them are individual artists. They're not having big co uh, companies with large, um, uh, you know, studios with lots of people. Some of them are, but you know, it, <laughs> each man each man's on his own, man. It's mm -hmm. there's no no handout. Socialism, yeah. no bueno. Yeah, they yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they they don't even understand the terminology anymore. I mean, it's all just yeah. So yeah, yeah. Is being selective? Is being selective will improve the quality? Well, you mean it going forward now? I don't know. Uh, I don't understand the question either fully. Oh, you're. Oh, there's a question. I see. I see. Is being yeah, selective? Yeah, someone. It says it's being selective will improve. Yeah, I think always. I mean, it's 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 that's important to be to be honest with the artist and give them an honest feedback. I think. I mean, it's not well, that always. I that's always but I tell them, give them an idea of what I think of it. They they want that, me to. Well, that's always the way to go. Most dealers don't do that though. Yeah, yeah. They're they're afraid, they're afraid to. Um, but maybe the question might have been. I'm wondering if the question was, in terms of selective. I mean sort of situations like this result in what in what i would refer to as a great culling and a lot of the and i'm not wishing this is not my i'm not singling anything or anyone out but um there are a lot of galleries that won't survive which means there are a lot of artists that won't survive and the good ones will the great you know ones i think will. i think actually that's a bit of a problem we don't really have this kind of spokes union uh, gallery union things like this because i think we are also so always it's it's kind of phenomenon that art gallery owners always try to be as individual as possible and you know don't peer too much with others but i think we have i realized we need more galleries because there are so many artists in need of a gallery and well we, i started yeah, but, but if, if, it's not fun, if it's not functioning on a on an economic level that doesn't mean i don't think that it needs to be you know, that's, this is distinct from a nonprofit for a for-profit. I mean, nonprofits, we need more and more of these and alternative artist spaces and so on and so forth. But if an economic model is not working, I mean, it's not working. That yeah, doesn't but, mean you know, but, but, but looking at your career and, 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 and my career, uh, um, we both know, I mean, I have a more uh, privileged art background than you do, but we both know it was really tough to get there. And... And it, it was a lot of pain, you know, and a lot of people are not willing to go this way. And I think, I think we need to make it easier for others to go, you know, and then we would have more of that. Well, it is easier now. I mean, I may be speaking from a different viewpoint, but I mean, the, there's so much more accessibility to information and to disperse information in the world right now. I mean, you know, I think it's quite different in 1994 when I opened, there was no mobile phone. And the internet was just a twinkle in, in the in the in the sky, um, you know. But that's a pro, also. 
I mean, that's also... Uh, well, it wasn't a pro back then, buddy. Trust me. I mean, we were having to sell pot to, like, pay the rent. We didn't sell... No, no, but, but you know, did you, you know these stories of, of Hans Neundorf when he founded Artnet? You know, the people were selling yeah. businesses. They were selling works in, in, in Chelsea with an, with an upmark in the same building, you know, yeah. because there was no control of the... There was no... There was no um, a transparency at all whatsoever about what's been what traded for? Well, of, of course, there's, you're always going to see positives in all these different constructs. Yes, I remember well, you couldn't compare and contrast pricing. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, there would be enormous profits could be made in certain situations because nobody knew what the hell was real. Yeah. Or the <laughs> so, of course, yes. I mean, cool. I, long, I long for those days. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they come back. Maybe they come back now. <laughs> they, they sure might. They sure might. I, I mean, at least I'm considering buying gold right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Tim, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, very energizing. And yeah, for sure. Let's stay in touch. Okay. Mine is over soon. Yeah, take care, okay? Happy Easter. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks.